Hi, I'm Thomas Boucher, and in this video we'll do a little show and tell on a recent tool that I made. If you've been following my work for a while, then you know that I'm interested in traditional locksmithing and making historical type locks and newer stuff that has some inspiration from older techniques. And I do a lot of stuff by hand. I try to use as little power tools as I can, though I do use them. And so part of what I'm interested in is trying to understand how they used to make stuff and trying to build up my tools to reflect some of those processes. So a goal that I have is when I find some of these types of tools or tools that I think I can use, I want to eventually make a bunch of them and have them at my disposal to be able to use. And one of the most recent ones that I made is this gauge. Now I've got a little bit of a description on this, but I'm gonna have to read from my phone as I can't have this all memorized. So a lot of you may be familiar with the encyclopedia that Diderot made, and he identifies this tool as a key gauge to equalize the thickness of the stem. Now another encyclopedia that is also of French origin and was put out around the same time was written by Henry Louis Duhamel du Monceau. I may be butchering that because I don't speak French, but he also outlines a lot of similar trades and things and he also has a locksmithing section. I actually kind of like the Duhamel one better than the Diderot one, but I, I do certainly look at both of them. And they both show this tool. I did a really rough translation on what this tool is and how to use it from the Duhamel book. And so I'll read a little bit of that here. Again, this is a rough translation, so some of the sentences sound a little weird, but it was the best I could kind of quickly do. The gauge is composed of an iron strip folded at a right angle. One of the legs of the square is about a third shorter than the other. At the end of the shorter branch, there is a iron pin parallel to the larger branch of the square. Finally, in the end of the longest branch, there is a nut which allows an iron tip to pass through so that the tip of the screw is brought closer to the further away from the spindle. Here's how to use this tool. We put the pin in the gauge of the keyhole, apply it on one side against its wall and bring the tip of the screw close until it touches the key outside. The thickness of the key at this point is therefore precisely what is between the pin and the tip. By rotating the stem, making it go up and down, we see if the thickness is the same everywhere. Where the stem cannot pass without pushing back the point, the thickness is greater and smaller where it touches less. So what this tool does is it measures the wall thickness of a hollow stem key and it allows you to gauge if it's even so that way when you're filing it you can even it up and get that hollow bore centered on the stem as best as you can. Now at present my tool just has some machined nuts on the two spindles. Eventually I will make thumb screws but I just haven't gotten to that point yet and I haven't used this tool yet really I mean I've, I've put the key on and I've rotated to sort of see what it does but I haven't started filing the key and so I'm also going to go ahead and demonstrate a little bit of that trying to center this bore hole as, as best as I can. So this is a recent key that I made and it's a single piece. I'm experimenting with this form a little more. I've done some in the past but I'm going over the process again and trying to refine it some. The stem on this is about 5 sixteenths of an inch round and the bore hole is 3 sixteenths of an inch. So there's not a whole lot of slop side to side for that drill to not go pretty straight without coming out the side. And it comes down to maybe about where my thumb nail is. And just from looking at it, it looks like it goes relatively straight. When we put it on the tool and we begin to rotate it, you can see it gets a little closer there and further away on this side from the tip here on this. And so that's what this tool does, it allows you to see where it might be out. So I'm going to try filing some and see if I can adjust this and maybe bend the bow a little bit and try to get it more centered. So it's ever so slightly off one direction and I'm gonna try to correct that as best as I can. I may try to bend the bow over this way just a little bit. Hopefully it'll bend without really damaging um, the hollow stem. I'm just tapping it lightly with a, a wooden hammer and it does seem to be moving. Hard to tell. Maybe overcorrected it there a little bit. I'm gonna leave that there, start filing a little bit and see if we get a little bit better results. 
I have to be careful with how I grab this in the vise as well. Since that's hollow, it'll easily crush. But for now, I can grab it up at the top here because that, that hollow uh, stem, I think it ends somewhere around half inch down from the bow. So I, I have a little bit to grab from for now. And again, like everything that I work on for the most part, as I'm filing it, I just wanna go a little bit, check it, file a little bit, check it, and just keep doing that because otherwise you're gonna find yourself in trouble. And with how thin the wall of this is gonna end up getting, I could quite easily file too far and expose that hole of the stem further up. So you just, you gotta keep checking everything as you go. So with this key, I'm pretty much trying to copy an existing key that I have. My proportions are a little off on the bow. It's a little bigger than I want. And like I said, this stem right now, I forged it to about 5 16 It's more octagonalized than round. And that's because if I kept forging it more, it would've got longer than I wanted it to be. So when I forge the next one, I need to look at maybe having a little less material there. Ultimately, it wants to end up around a quarter of an inch. So there's not gonna be a whole lot of material on the, th the thickness of the wall. By having the 5 16 allows me to adjust some of these things where it's off center. So having that extra meat means I can bring one side in if I need to. Because as we saw, that hole was just slightly off center. So whatever amount I have to adjust that is really helpful. And again, I can slide this key up and down and I can check wherever this lower post is pointing to it, I can check on the thickness. So I have the ability to check pretty much the whole length of this. So I think as I file this, it's going to be kind of balancing between getting as close to center as I can and living with a little bit of it being off center. I have this little outside divider that I can kind of check some of my numbers because I do want to make sure that I don't go too far below quarter inch. Again, one, because that's what I'm aiming for for the size, but I also don't want to end up filing into the hollow stem. So another thing to note, at the top there where it's really off on this one side, the bow seems to be over this way more. That's kind of okay because the bow's a lot thicker so I can take a lot of more material off the side that it's leaning to. But also right below it, that's gonna be filed into a point, uh, a tapered like, round point leading up to the, the bow. So the fact that there's a lot more, there's about 3 30 seconds of an inch between the material here and my gauge and about a 30 second on this side, 16th of an inch is a lot, but again, I can take more material off this side. And there might be a little possibility for me to nudge this over that way some. And That's getting pretty close. And I'll keep using this as I'm filing. And I can move this post in as I get more material taken off so I can really make sure I'm touching. So I can still take some material off this side. Hopefully you can see down here, there's a little bit of a gap there. It's maybe a 32nd of an inch. And if I flip it to this side, it widens up to about a 16th of an inch now. So I'm a little bit better than when I started. So I'll continue on using this gauge and filing up the key stem to check my accuracy of the borehole and make sure that it's relatively centered. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, Check the links in the description below for my Instagram and my website where you can purchase some things to help support me in this channel. Thanks again for watching. Bye.